Hey, what's up, guys? Today we have a special guest on the show. This is one of uh, my first students, one of the uh, first coaches that I helped back in 2015, and his name is Jose Gamara. And Jose is the owner and director of Suda Soccer Academy. It's based in Wisconsin, and I can't wait to uh, interview him. Can't wait to have him share his story. And this is a great interview for you if uh, you're either just getting started or if you've been wanting to coach full time. Um, Jose has a really cool story. Um, and we're going to unpack that here in today's episode. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the episode. All right, what's up, Jose? Thanks for being on the show today. I've been looking forward to this for a really long time, man. I know we got in contact, I think it was around 2015. Um, so we're just going to get all in here. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's crazy. Yeah, it's 2019 <laughs> now. Uh, I know a lot, yeah. a lot has changed for you. I know a lot has changed for me too, like during that time. Um, but what we're going to do here is just kind of unpack your story and we'll talk about, you know, where you started, where things are at now. But one of the questions I always have for coaches when I interview them is like, just tell me about your childhood and like when you started playing soccer and just kind of like back in the, in the young days. Wow. You, you want to go that back, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My childhood. Well, I was born and raised in Peru to begin with. Um, I didn't really move to the United States until I was 18. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I was 18. That was nine years ago already. And um, yeah, my childhood, I mean, I, I love playing soccer. I was that kid that uh, would just go in the parks and just start kicking the ball, really. Um, right. Yeah, when I had nothing to do, there was no smartphones back then, really. <laughs> Right. So that was what was fun. Somehow I've always been, you know, playing the sport, just in, in really involved with the sport. Even even when I, I didn't I didn't really have much room, you know, to play soccer. I mean, I didn't go to school here. I was, um, you know, things like that. So I would just go and play on amateur. And that's kind of when I realized there was a need for, uh, you know, for good soccer programs around the area where I live in Baraboo. Because I met a bunch of parents that wanted their, wanted their kids playing. Uh, play. Then again, there was no academies. There was, a, I think there was one club around the area for, you know. So that's when I decided, you know, to start helping out really without a, I wouldn't even charge people any, 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 any kind of money, you know, to just train their kids and see where that would take me because that's something I've always wanted to do as well. Right. Yeah. That's, that's one of the questions I had was, and it was very similar to me when, <clears throat> when I first started, I did everything for free. I just wanted to, to help. And, yeah. and I've seen, you know, a lot of coaches now when they start, um, I don't want to say every coach, but a lot of coaches out there, when they do start, they're, they're just trying to make money at the beginning. And then they see that that's hard to do. <laughs> and then they just quit. But mm -hmm. with, with that mindset of wanting just to give and help really what it does is it, it allows you to meet a lot of parents. There's no pressure and you're just doing it because you want to help. <laughs> and I know you're still, that's, that's the reason why you're still in business because you've been wanting to help rather than take. And, and I know that's, that's a big problem that I, I know some coaches have when they first start. And, uh, and I know that's, that's how you started. And I know when you were younger, so when you were back um, growing up, obviously you played the game all the time. Did, did you see yourself when you were like a kid were you, did you see yourself like wanting to coach or did, did you find that out later on when you, when you moved here to the U S 
did I see myself to become a coach? You said, I'm sorry. Yeah. Kind of... Yeah. I've always thought about it. To be completely honest with you, I I remember telling myself, you know, if I if I would make it to a, to a pro league, I would um I would have probably go for coaching. Right. Was that something you wanted to do? Is play pro? Definitely. Gotcha. Did you? Mm-hmm. Was that something when you got to the states? Were Were you like trying to do that? No, it was mostly when I was younger, though. From uh, uh, from you know, I I really I I can't even remember when I first started playing, but I I, I really enjoyed playing the sport and. Um, you know, I tried out up until I was 16, 17. Well, I basically didn't get recruited by any club back at home. And, you know, you, got, you have to get a job. You have to start going to school. Mom right. was pressure. Mom was always on my ear about, you know, <laughs> going to school. And um, I actually moved up here as a, a exchange student. Oh, okay. You know, but nothing to do with soccer at that time. That that was mostly the time where, when I, like, stopped playing, really. When I was 18 up until I was 21, 22. I didn't have anywhere to play, really, you know? Right. So how was, and, it, how was it when you first got to America? What, what, what was that feeling like? Was it weird? Did, did it feel like <laughs> a completely different life? Definitely a different life, that's for sure. But... I don't know. I was young. I adapted pretty quick. I, I, I guess. Gotcha. Um, the language is always a, a big thing still. <laughs> right. I mean, but, to uh, me, it sounds like you, you speak really good English. Oh, thank you, man. But I get better every day, you know, with every, <laughs> anything you do. <laughs> right. That's funny. Um, how, how did that, that's a question that, you know, there, there's another, <clears throat> there's a couple other guys that, taught to that came from different countries but like how hard was that learning the language i mean i still learn it every day there's new words that i literally learn every single day but um i guess it wasn't it wasn't as hard for me because i i grew up in a, i grew up going to a private school right and um we would have about three hours of English every, every week. Gotcha. So, you know, so that, that's something I grew up with. It, I mean, I, it's, you know, it's obviously not the same thing about speaking the language three hours a week, you know, right. Compared to someone that lives here. That was the, the main thing for me to break that, um, that shyness, I guess, because, you know, when you know you have an accent, when you know people don't even understand what you're saying because your accent is that thick, that was the biggest thing for me to overcome that, uh, that barrier. Right. Even though I spoke the language, but you know, right. When I first got here, my accent was, was thicker than now. And there was people right. that wouldn't know what the hell was I saying. <laughs> <laughs> right. It was funny, man. I, I have a funny story. So this was before I met you, but I went to Portugal. Oh, okay. I went by myself. I actually went with a friend but he was only there for a couple of days and I spent some time there in a, uh, in a city called Lisbon. Mm-hmm. And right when I landed, I, I was so naive. I, I thought everyone there spoke Spanish and, and I grew up like my mom was a Spanish teacher. So I grew up like understanding it. I could speak it really well. And right when I got there, I was like, Oh, everyone's going to speak Spanish. Like I'll be fine. But they all speak Portuguese. <laughs> and totally different (laughs) yeah and i found out too like right when i got there i was in the taxi and i started speaking in spanish to the taxi driver and he like just stopped the car and like told me to get out and then i was like what and then i started talking to some people and they're like yeah um no one in portugal likes to speak spanish and I was like, oh, great. <laughs> they don't like speaking Spanish? Yeah. Yeah. And they, and they said, a lot of the people that I met too said they, they don't um, get along with anyone who speaks Spanish. And I was like, what? Um, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. And I was like, all right, well, I'm not going to be able to talk to anyone then. <laughs> for the next <laughs> week. Do it in English. Yeah. So, <laughs> for next time. Yeah, it was funny. 
Um, so what, one of the questions I like asking too, cause everybody has a different answer. Um, what was the first like job that you had? Like after you got to America, like what was the, what one of the first things that you started doing to make some money? I, I was doing housekeeping for a little while. That was the first thing I ever did. Gotcha. After you did that, did you, what other types of jobs did you have? After, after that, I just, I started working on a, a few restaurants here and there. And gotcha. um, I realized that, you know, there was more money to be made by serving and bartending. Right. So I did that for the last, up until I first met you, I guess. I, right. after I met you, I obviously took me a little while to start getting, you know, things running and stuff, but for about five years, I did, I, that's all I did, serving and bartending. Gotcha. Gotcha. <clears throat> and when you were doing this, this might be kind of hard to answer, but when you were doing the bartending stuff like that, when you would get done with your day, would you be like, man, like I want to try to do something else? Or like, what, what was your thought process when, like, after you did every that single day, right? Literally that, what you just said, that's, that was every single day after I would come back from work, even, you know, even on the good days when you're making quite some good money, right. Um, I would just go home and be like, you know, I, you know, this this is definitely not something I, I even seen myself doing forever or like, I, you know, don't take me wrong. It's not that I you know, that I looked down at, the, at that job or anything, but that was something I didn't really want to, I didn't really enjoy doing. Right. You know, it was paying the bills, but that was about it. Right. Gotcha. And what, what was, what do you think for you was the thing that initially drove you to be like, all right, I want to start this soccer thing on the side. So like, I, obviously you were doing bartending at that time, but was there anything that was that just made you be like, all right, I need to, I need to put myself out there and, and just try to do something? Yeah, when I um, really when I when um, I'm just a couple parents got got together and um, asked me if I wanted to, you know, to help out with a team of kids, and I did. Obviously, I was just coaching them. We we would not train. We would just go on the weekends and play. And, you know, I realized that, that there was people that, you know, wanted to do that. And I obviously grew up in an environment where I would always play soccer. So my parents took me to uh, academies, camps, and, you know, I played club my, my whole life. So, so I know what, you know, what, um, what the, how, how important it is for kids to train since they're young. And that's what I started doing it that's when I started doing it back then. Right. And I realized, you know, there was a need for, for good coaches. There was a need for good soccer programs. And I really, that was my thing. I really wanted to, to show people that this was, you know, this was something doable around here. Right. And I wanted to help the kids around here because they really loved the sport. The one, the one, the few kids that I met, they really loved playing it and they were just having a blast, you know, even though we're losing every single game. <laughs> I remember. Right. <laughs> Right. They were, they were having fun. They're learning. They're, yeah. I just brought back so many memories. Right. Seriously. Yeah. That's, that's, that's kind of when it clicked. Right. Yeah. I know it's funny, man. I know for me, one of the most fun years I had, uh, I was in college and I was coaching this team and they were, they were terrible. Um, <laughs> but like everyone showed up, they, they were all eager to learn. Mm -hmm. And I just remember like going to games and we would be losing like five or six zero. And in my head, like at the beginning, I would get so frustrated because like I'm, I'm competitive and I, I don't want to lose. But I realized like, you know, what, the, these kids, like technically they have gotten a lot better because um, they put in some work and, and they're still further behind. But I just remember that just being a fun year, even though we lost. But it showed mm -hmm. me that, like, man, if I can put something together for kids that's fun, they can learn. Like, if it really helps them, then I know I've done my job. Because a lot yeah. of those kids, I know that 
you know, if, if I was really hard on them, if they didn't like coming to practice, they probably would have just quit. And, and I know a lot of those kids, um, I haven't kept in touch with all of them because I mean, that was like 10 years ago. Um, but I know a lot of those kids ended up going to plan high school and, and stuff like that. And, and I know that no matter like how good or bad the players are, if they're having fun and they respect you and they show up and they work hard, like, you know, they're getting something out of it. And then as a coach, that makes you feel good too. Cause you're like, all right, like that makes me feel respected at the end of the day because they're coming and learning from me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And so I know, again, this, this is one of those questions where I, I could talk about it for like five hours on my end. <laughs> um, but when you like the day you officially started your business, like what was going through your head that day when you were like, all right, like I'm going to take this for real. This is going to be a serious thing. Like, explain that feeling that you had like that first day when you did it. Well, let's start with, with I think there was two official days that there was the first time <laughs> I, when I, um, when I just, um, printed out some, some piece, a bunch of pieces of papers and I went around and put them on laundry mats and gas stations, just, uh, offering a free camp a, a whole free weekend camp. I remember. Gotcha. Um, I just, I, I haven't even met you back then. I, I just wanted to start, do something. I just really yeah. thought this was something that could work and was so nervous. I didn't know who, I, who the hell was going to show up. Who was I going to meet? What kind of people was I going to be training? Right. Um, so it was pretty chaotic, but you know what? Um, I would probably do it again if I have to go then, you know, just, just to, just to see how, you know, how much more structure I needed at the time. Right. So how many, how many kids showed up to that? I remember there was about 15 or 15 kids. Wow. That's awesome. All different ages though. <laughs> right. were, some, some of them were six years old. Some of them were 14. I remember <laughs> <laughs> all kinds of different levels. And um, yeah, it was pretty chaotic on my end trying to run drills with you right. know, that, that big of a group. And yeah, I was, it was fun, but definitely, uh, definitely a little crazy. But then I set up some, after I talked to you, I set up, um, what I, what I ended up calling, um, uh, summer school. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember talking to you, setting, uh, setting up the website, setting up the, the payment. Uh, and yeah, and I launched a summer program. I opened up 10 groups, uh, with each group being, you know, being confirmed by two, 10 players. Right. You know, different age groups. I separated, by, separated them by gender, you know, male, girls and boys. And, um, and yeah, I opened up 10 groups. And mostly all of them filled up. Right. That's awesome, man. You know, and it was, it was crazy to me because... You know, for me at that time, opening up that kind of program was, you know, putting my putting myself in a situation where I, even though I didn't know if, it, if they were all going to fill up, I, you know, I had to stop working because mm -hmm. this was a Monday through Friday thing, basically. And uh, yeah, Saturdays, I remember having a lot of stuff going on back then. I, I was coaching a team that I had committed on already, so... Where I'm going with this, I basically was not, I knew I was not going to be able to work at, you know, at the restaurant. Right. But right. It, but it ended up working out because, you know, just on that program, I met basically all the families that I still work with up to this day. And, you know, it obviously made me a decent amount of money. So right. that's basically where everything started. Right. And so... The day that you like went all throughout town and you, you put those, I guess, flyers out. Yeah. The um, flyers definitely. When you did that, like, cause I, I did something really similar when I started, uh, mm -hmm. but when you were doing that, like, were you like, man, I hope kids come like to this, like, what, what were you thinking? Were you, were you just like, 
kids better be here or like, did you put any pressure on yourself or you just like, I'm just going to go try this. I was trying not to put pressure on myself, but it was hard. Right. It was, um, you know, there was a lot of mixed feelings, uh, not wanting to fail. Like I, I, I read quite a lot about, you know, um, not wanting to fail is the main thing that you have to overcome. Like, you know, I, and you know, I knew it could. I knew anything could have happened. I knew I could have just probably got one kid. Probably nobody would would show up. But you know, after overcoming that, like after basically putting up the flyers, you overcome that fear, and you know, you you are just you just you have to do it after that. Right, right. Uh, there yeah, was a lot of mixed feelings. Up. You know, I was there was a lot of adrenaline running through. Um, <laughs> I was, uh, I don't know, I was really was really hoping it was going to work, I guess. Mm -hmm. And it did. Yeah. You, you had people show mm -hmm. up. Um, Cause I know, I know a lot of people out there, a lot of coaches when, cause I would say most coaches who listen to this podcast, they're, they're in one of three categories. They're either, they have a job, they, they want to quit, but they, they haven't done anything about it yet. Um, and then there's the coach that, has started, but they're doing it like on the side. And then there's the coach who's been doing this full time and they've been doing it full time for a while and they want to go to the next level. But I know a lot of coaches when they're doing a job and they're like, Oh man, I want to do this soccer thing or this basketball thing or whatever the sport is. They have the time to go around their city to post a flyer or to talk to people or to do something on Facebook but a lot of people hesitate because just like you said, they're afraid to fail. But when you do it, it automatically makes you overcome it because once you do it, it's like, all right, well, I have to show up because <laughs> if there's kids that show up today and, and I'm not here, then I'm the one that looks bad. <laughs> yeah. Then you, then you're never going to be able to do this. <laughs> right. Right. And so I know, again, this is one of the questions I've asked someone recently and, and I know like, I can remember the feeling I had when this happened, but what, what was the feeling like? I know like after we, we worked together for a couple months and we got your site set up and we talked about payments and setting up subscriptions and stuff like that. But what was the feeling like when, you know, after you got all that stuff set up, when you got your first big client who signed up for that type of program, like, did you just feel like, man, like, I know I can do this full time. Like what, what was going through your head when you, when you had those systems in place and you had that first committed client? That, that was it. Like, you know, I, right there and then I knew this was something that I could do. I knew it was doable. And there was, see, that was the first program I opened and it was a, a whole three month program. So, um, I knew there was way, you know, there was so many more programs I could have opened. I, I just because of time now, I don't I don't have the time to do it all, but I could have a, you know, a straightening program, a speed and agility program. These are things that were going through my head at the time and still through to this day, you know? Right. I wish I like some, sometimes, but I, then again, you don't want to kill yourself doing all, you know, trying right. to run pra practice six seven days a week for right. four or five hours at a time right gotcha and so that that really gave you the belief and you're like man now yeah. that this is set up i i know i could get really as many kids as i want that's everything basically yeah because after that you know yeah you're you're not even thinking about like about okay who's gonna show up or anything you're thinking about what kind of programs i, I could have opened you know right and I knew every every one of them would have probably draw kids from maybe di even different sports for conditioning and all that. But right, um, you know, I there, then again, there's just there's just so much you can do with the time you have, you know. Right. Exactly. Because then I realized I was also that first summer, I had every single group that I had was training twice a week. So, you know, that meant for me to be there five days at a time, I remember, Monday through Friday, basically, um, all day. Right. Were you and pretty dead another, on Saturday? Yeah. And, you know, that's another thing I realized that it, it was, I mean, I, I enjoyed it, but um, <laughs> on, on 
on the um, on the last month of summer, you know, I was just <laughs> beat up. Yeah. I mean, I was tired. Uh, my energy was not the same, and I also felt like I wasn't giving the kids the you know what I could the my everything either. You know, I I right. could I know I could have done for a, a little better on some specific days, but I was just so tired after after a whole three months doing all that. You know, right. Yeah, you probably like didn't even want to see a soccer ball, did you? <laughs> for 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 a, for a little bit there, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, man, I I'll never forget that. I know for me, uh, this is like in two thousand late two thousand thirteen. I had this summer where it, it was it was like so crazy. I, I had coaches that were working for me, but I also had myself. I had like around forty sessions a week. And it was, mm-hmm. it was Monday through Friday and basically did like eight sessions in a row every single day. Um, I was terrible at like trying to schedule. Like it, it was just all like eight sessions in a row. And then I did that for three months. And I remember at the end of that, I was like, I was really reconsidering like coaching. Cause I was like, man, like I just don't know if, if I can do this. Like, and <laughs> And then I realized, well, you know, I, I have this set up in a way to where like I have to do everything. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. It shouldn't be set up that way. Um, and also I had to go back and, and change my pricing, change the commitment level. There's a lot of little details that happened when I got to that point. But I know for you, like if you had to go back, I know you probably wouldn't change anything about that. But, but now, you know, you can leverage your time better. Um, and I, I was just on your website before this interview and I was looking at the winter programs that you have set up for the different age groups. And like for, for you though, this is one, one thing that I've wanted to ask you is I, I haven't talked to you in a while, which is like, yeah. what's, what's like the main age group that you train that that's part of your Academy? Is, is there like a really popular age group that you like to work with? That I like to work with, uh, usually my older kids, my own older group of boys. I have a, um, a U14 group of boys, so they're all about high 13. school. Yeah, they're almost to high school because, um, you know, they're most. Some of them are 12 and 13 year olds still. Most of them, uh, they're I think in middle school, still. Right. None of them has is 14 yet, but. That's the group I enjoy the most. Then, uh, yeah, all the groups, I guess, because then, uh, you know, then they start getting it a little more. Right. They already have the foundation. They, mm. they're they already serious because they're still playing. Yeah. Uh, yep. You can probably make the sessions more intense. Uh, they can handle more. Uh, yeah, totally get it. Uh, mm-hmm. w- what's the age group? that you've found to be the hardest to train? I don't know if the hardest, but, um, you know, the younger groups, younger right. groups, you have to have a lot more patience. Uh, you know, you have to be careful with what you say that for with the, with the little ones. Right. So those are, yeah, well, I could, you could, I guess you could call it the hardest groups, <laughs> right. seven, eight year olds. I, I am done trying to train, uh, five and six year olds though. Yeah, I can't do that either. <laughs> I, it's, it's a little too much for me. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I think I consider myself a nice guy and stuff, but then when you know, I, I don't, I don't like not to be when when I'm talking and not there's all these kids not paying not paying any attention. Then you only have like the one minute time 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 frame where you know you can get their attention and right it gets too much. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's what, that's something I quickly realized when I started training kids was um, some of the first kids I started with, they were that young. And I was like, man, I just can't, I cannot get their attention. Um, and I always thought like they didn't like me and I wasn't entertaining enough because I don't know, the way I am right now is the same way I am all the time. I, I, yeah, I, I'm not this like hilarious guy that's going to go entertain kids. <laughs> um no, I feel the same. I make sure I tell my my all my players that I'm not here to entertain you. I'm, you know. <laughs> yeah, we're here to here to train and yeah. and get better. And and I know that was so difficult for me that those age groups. But it also taught me 
to be more patient, just like you said with the kids, because you know every age group is so different, especially oh, yeah. like boys and girls that are between the ages of like nine and thirteen. Um, they're so radically different, and and that's one of the things I know you said. You said uh, like in some of your groups you'll separate them to where it's like boys only or girls only. Um, are you still do you still have it set up that way, or do you have? That's I haven't changed that just because um, I honestly think, it, you know, they, it, the, the program itself helps them a little more, you know, they, uh, the way they, uh, they act around each other, you know. Right. Yeah, they're more uh, comfortable. They're, they're more comfortable. That's what I was looking for. See, right. I still, I'm still learning. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. So this might be a tough question. Uh, I like to ask it though, for you personally, like what was the hardest thing that you had to overcome with, with your business? I, I know you kind of, you talked about, you know, the language and stuff like that, but outside of that for you, like what was really difficult, something that was an obstacle that you had to overcome to like really get going with your business? Yeah, the mo the biggest one I think just starting. Right. You know, just, just going out there and being out there really. I, I think that was the hardest thing because they're, they're, like you said, you know, there's there's so many things going through your head when you even when you're putting up those flyers. Right. You know, like it was it was just at, at sometimes it was just so awkward for me to go on laundromats and just like hang hang up soccer stuff. Right. I live in a, well, how many people's in this town? I think it's just only like 20,000. Right. So it's yeah, a pretty it's, small town. Right. And that's, I, I know you might not admit this, but there was probably some thought in your head and you were like, oh, this town's too small. To, oh yeah. To run a business like this. And dude, I got like five messages yesterday on Instagram from coaches that live in cities that are bigger than yours. And they said the same thing. They're like, well, I haven't started because my city's too small. And I can't wait till they hear this interview because like, you're proving that wrong. And yeah. I know that's a, that's a logical fear though. It's like, wow, I mean, this, there's not enough people that would want to do something like this. But, mm -hmm. um, but I know that that's a, that's a real thought everyone would have, even if they live in a bigger city, if 100,000 people, some, most coaches will still think that. Um, and I know for you, like the, the thought process of trying to get started and, you know, putting yourself out there and stuff like that. Once you did that, did you, did you just feel like you had a lot more confidence? Like, did it just give you a lot more confidence just to get started? Yes. The first, the first time was the worst. <laughs> But right. after that, you know, you just every day that you go out and you know you, you still do it, and you just got it, you get more comfortable with it. You know, you are more confident on yourself, right? And yeah, that was the main thing, man. Just go out there and do it. Really, right. start it somehow. You don't you don't need that much, right? And how how much more confident do you think you are now compared to when you first started your business? a lot more i mean just even maybe because i you know like i said it's basically the same fa families that keep coming back and you know plus I, i'll get like one or two new families but they they already know about the academy they already know about who i am because i i the one thing i don't like doing anymore is hiring coaches right so any any program that i start i I make sure that I will be there. You know, if I have to have someone come help me out for one session, maybe, or, you know, that's right. a different story, but I, I, that's the one thing I don't do anymore because I did it and it's, it's not the same. So any program that I open, I, I, I do it myself. Right. So right. families know who I am and they, you know, like you said, they, uh, before they go, they, they, they had already paid. They, they had already committed to the programs that I do. So they, yeah, in a, in a sense, they re, you, you already know they respect you. You already know they respect the work you do. That's why they're signing up. Right. Exactly. So that, that's big. Right. And I know too, like 
when you go to bed at night, it's like, all right, I have these families who are committed. I don't mm -hmm. have to worry about them paying. They're not paying yeah. at the field. They're doing it online. It's, it's all streamlined. And oh, yeah. I, I know for me, that was one of the hard, that even that piece was one of the hardest things for me to overcome because um, I never had like clients would never pay me. <laughs> they would, they would say they would, and then they'd come back a month later and give me half the money or like nothing or just Some leave. Some of them would stop showing up. Yeah. And, and that was, that was like normal for me back then. And I think I know what the answer is here when, when I ask you, but if you had to just go back to, you know, when you were doing bartending for those five, four or five years, like what would you go back and tell yourself like at that point when you were probably thinking about, man, I want to start this thing or I want to do something different. Like what would you go back and tell yourself knowing what you know now? Should have started earlier. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just, um, if I would, if I could go back, I would have probably told myself to, to do it because I, this is a thought I had for a, a few years before I, before I set up the first thing, you know, the first uh, free camp that I did. And, uh, and I would have told myself to look, check out, check out your site. <laughs> right. And how did because you? Because that's what basically helped me the most, man. Just having the, the whole system set up. Right. And how okay. did you, like when, when, you, when we first initially started talking, is that how you found out about me was on YouTube? How did I find out about you? I, I was just looking for sources online, really. To be honest, I just went on Google. And at the time, that was, like you said, that was three or four years ago almost. But uh, there was no, no, no many not many resources available, you know? Right. Uh, about this kind of business, at least. Or not that I found of. Right. Uh, I, came out, I came across your, your website. Yeah. It's probably... Then it... Then it took me to YouTube videos. Then um, next week, I I was contacting you. We were on the phone, and I got the book. And yeah, it's kind right. of how it went down. Yeah, man. I remember our first conversation because um, mm -hmm. I I I I'll, I'll actually never forget this because you were talking about how like you were wanting to like really get started with it. And I remember I asked you a lot of questions that I ask everyone still, which is like, well, like, why do you want to do this? Like, what's the real reason? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I could, I could instantly tell over the phone that you were doing this for the right reasons. And I remember you telling me this, you were like, there's no one up here in my city who's doing anything like this. And I want to be the one who does it. I don't know if you remember mm -hmm. telling me that, but I just I, I I I I do actually because that was the main thing. There was nobody doing it. There was no no structure academy. Right. I was even thinking on forming a club. I remember talking yeah. to you about that. I, I do. You're the one that, that you're you're the one that talked me about a uh, uh, kind of not not to go down that road and. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I could tell that on that call, you were like really genuine about just like wanting to help kids. And I remember, dude, like I've obviously I've never told you this, but I was with my brother, Steven, and he mm -hmm. was right next to me when I was on the phone with you. And he was like, Oh, who was that? And I told him and, and I was like, dude, this guy, like, I, I know it's probably going to take maybe a couple of years, but like, he's going to be really successful. Um, because he's going to do something that no one else is going to do in his area. And if someone else does try to do what you do, like, they're going to have a really hard time competing with you because you already have the, the best program up there and you, you could have that for as really long as you want. But I remember I told my brother, Steve, um, uh, about you. And I told him yesterday that we were going to do this interview and he was like, Oh yeah, I remember when, when we were <laughs> talking about you. Um, but it's just really cool, man, to see that you, you did something that so many people are unwilling to do, which is like go away from the, you know, safe route. And, and I talked about this on another podcast with another coach I just interviewed, but 
you know, a lot of coaches, even if they like coaching and they want to do it, they, they're going to stay inside their own little box and just do their, their job that they have and not step outside and be like, you know what? I want to help more kids and I want to create this thing that I can do because I like it. I like helping kids. And you already did that. And like, I would tell you if, if I talked to a hundred coaches today over the phone, even if they've watched some of my YouTube videos, uh, and if they haven't started yet, maybe one will actually start their business. 99 will just go back and, you know, not do it because they're afraid. Um, they have all these limiting beliefs and ultimately like they just, they don't take action and you did that. And it's really cool to see where you're at now because mm -hmm. I know that was, we talked what, four or five years ago. Um, and just to see that you've stuck with it. And I, I guarantee you that you probably have so many stories of like things that have happened over the last couple of years um, <laughs> that have been good, that have been crazy, that have just made you learn more about what you're doing. Um, but ultimately that's how you grow your, your business and how you grow yourself is by just going through the experience. And if I was sitting next to a coach right now who just hasn't started his business yet and he was like you, you know, six, seven years ago, like, what would you tell him? To go for it. It's doable. It really is. You know, even if there is, a, there is somebody else already doing it, regardless of what the situation is, you know, you, you can put all the excuses in your head, but if you don't try it out, you know, you're never going to know. Right. Exactly. Awesome, man. So I asked every coach this too. Uh, where do you think your business will be in, in like five years from now? Like, have you, have you thought that far away from uh, now? I, I definitely have. I think um, um, the, the academy itself, I, I, I know for sure it will just – keep getting bigger and you know we will attract more committed players every year and um i definitely one uh, the one the one problem like i i run run into though it's the field situation on on the, during the winters right Be, because this being a small city there's only about three schools around here uh and the civic center that has a field you know and there's basketball programs that's the one thing i run into there's there's a lot going on for me to to be able to rent fields as much as I want in the winter. Right. So I definitely want to have a facility of my own, like, you know, um, um, basically a skill development facility. And I know in five years, that's a, that's kind of a goal I put for myself, you know, that I will, that the, the business will own something like that. Right. And, you know, then I can help a lot more kids or in the area mm -hmm. Then I can, you know, there's 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 so many more things you, I I feel like I can do with if I had a field available year round. Right, for sure. Yeah, and, and I do know too. Um, a lot of coaches that live like in the Midwest or in the Northeast or the Northwest because it's obviously it's a lot colder up there. Like I live in mm. Texas, and yeah, I, I think it's cold when it's like sixty degrees. <laughs> um, <laughs> but. uh but I know that's an, that's an obstacle It's like, you know, cause a lot of coaches will, they'll do something in the summer or in the late spring. And then when it starts to get cold, they just, most coaches just stop their business. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know you've obviously had to either rent indoor space or negotiate space at, at those gyms. Um, but I know if, if you had to just go back into time, like on day one, when you first started your business, like what, what do you think is, I don't know, this is kind of hard to ask sometimes, but what do you think is the outside of, you know, the fear of failing and stuff like that? What else was really just blocking you from beginning like, was there, was there anyone that was in your social circle that was like, Hey, like, don't do it. Or were they like, Oh, that's a stupid idea. Or 
like did were people around you like supporting the idea or they wanting you to do it or did you even talk to anyone about it before yeah um to be honest no basically nobody that i talked to in my circle of friends really thought really thought that would work right so um, what that make you think I wanted to do it even more. I wanted to, <laughs> to an extent I wanted to fucking put them wrong. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I um I I really did. So it it made me upset every time um someone would tell me, you know, like what are you, what are you talking about? Who's who's gonna pay you to train soccer around here and right, you know, things like that. I mean, I was obviously probably in the wrong environment. I was I was working at a restaurant. Right. Do you still do do you still see those people or no? Um no right not really i mean i have i have some of them on facebook and stuff but no i mean i guess i've been caught up with what i'm doing and you know not paying attention to it not paying attention really to i don't really i i feel like i don't really have time to you know like to right. do many more many other things <laughs> right right it, and it really is though i get home and after you know after after training for a few hours even you you are tired not not me, not you're physically tired you know you are planning on things right now i'm planning on my summer programs already you know when once the spring hits the one thing i started doing with the whole with the with the academy is that um i don't know for how long i'm going to keep doing this but um i also offered a, a coaching service now for clubs okay cool i didn't know that yeah that's something i i don't have on the website yet Gotcha. But since last spring, I offered that too, you know. So during the season, I'm pretty busy. I I had to travel about an hour away from from my from from where I live last last spring, and I have to do it again this fall. But this fall, I got you know I got hired already by by another club to coach two of their teams, and so I, I guess I'm pretty occupied, man. And on top of that, I have I I still do the you know the skill development programs year round, right. basically. Right. And here and there, I try to have the, the one-on-one sessions, which is something that I, I think I kind of want to, you know, go towards now just right. because of the time commitment with the other stuff. I mean, you know, it's fun to do it. It's fun coaching entire teams and doing the camps itself. But I think that the one-on-one program is starting to call, call me every call me a little more every every right by every day that goes by right gotcha that's awesome man that you, i mean you have you have a lot going on um and it's just so cool like i, I love talking to people like you because it's so cool that you've you've made that decision to just be like you know what i'm gonna do it and if other people are telling me not to do it I'm just going to want to do it even more. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. uh, and that's really the opposite of how most people think though. Like most people are going to go ask their parents, they're going to ask their friends, whoever they hang out with. And if you ask someone who doesn't own a business, they're always going to tell you not to do it. <laughs> uh, that's just, that's really just the way it goes. And, oh, yes. and so I know I've kind of already asked you this, but if we just kind of like rewind even, even a year ago. So if we go back to one year ago, how much, how much more do you think you've learned about your business just in the last year? Just like to how, how to value your time. Um, I know you mentioned that, you're not bringing on any other coaches and stuff like that. So I'm assuming you've made a lot of changes in the last year, but like how much more do you think you've learned just about you and your business in the last 12 months? A lot, you know, it, that it, um, each day that goes by you, you learn uh, even how to talk to parents, right? You know, you're, you're learning something every day that goes by. That's the way I feel. You know, because there's a lot of things that come into place. Um, and you're not even talking about the, um, the quality of your practice itself. You know, right. you're talking about things outside that. Right. That's where, that, I think that's where I needed to learn the most. Right. Because I was, I was really shy to talk to, and I, you know, anyone that reads your book, 
a lot of us are probably on the same page, you know, anyone that wants to start something like this. You are shy to talk to parents. You are probably embarrassed to even start something like this because of what people can say to you, you know. Yep. Stepping out of the comfort zone is huge. Not many, not many people is, is willing to do that. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in the last 12 months, man, I, uh, I've learned a lot. I, I really have, like I, like I told you, you know, I don't, I don't bring in new coaches now. I have one or two guys that would, you know, would randomly help me and the families that I coach already know them. Right. It's basically what, you know, when something crazy comes up for me, mm-hmm. so if I have a session today and you know, some, some of the family gets sick or I have to go outside of town and, the one thing I don't like is canceling practice. So I would, uh, you know, I would probably call one of these guys to come run practice for me for the day, right. and I'll just pay him by the day. At, yeah, gotcha. But I don't, I don't, I don't do anymore like that. That's that's the one thing I, I quickly realized was not gonna work out for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I've, and, I've transitioned the same way, man. It's probably something you don't know about me. Is I, I, I mean, I used to have twelve guys that worked for me and we had i mean an unreal amount of kids that were in our program at one point and <laughs> it, it got to a point where i my role was it was so far away from soccer like i, I wasn't even training kids anymore it was i'm just dealing with managing people yeah and, and i realized at that point i was like man this it really isn't fun. Like I wasn't waking up happy like that. I have to go like refund this parent and deal with this problem because this coach didn't show up to the session or uh, like this coach didn't show up to my camp. So like, I mean, there was a lot of problems I ran into and, and I've learned since then that, you know, personally, I, I just, I need to become better at leading, but that made me realize, you know, back then I was like, man, I, I'd rather just help coaches who are like me that want to do their own thing. They want to get started. And that, that was really once I started taking this more serious, which was helping more coaches um, versus just building out this empire here in my city where we have like hundreds of kids and all these coaches that I'm trying to manage. Like it just wasn't, it's just not me. It's not my personality. Uh, and, uh, and I know if I didn't make that decision, I would have never been able to talk to you because I, I was way too busy <laughs> trying to do 500 million things before you came into my life. Um, but yeah, man, I, first, like, I really appreciate you coming on here and, and telling me everything and just being transparent. And, and I know I can tell you, man, there's going to be a lot of coaches out there who were in your shoes. that are going to listen to this. And I know a lot of them are going to be like, you know what? I need to do this now. Um, and it's <laughs> really the biggest cool. thing. Yeah. And it's really cool that you're able to come on here and do that. Cause that's really the whole goal for my podcast is, is I want other coaches to realize like, you know what? Like everybody out there has struggles. Everybody has obstacles and everyone's going to have to get started at some point. Um, and only those who stick it out long term the way you have will will succeed at the end of the day. Um, and so what I want to do, man, is I at the end of every episode, um, I always ask questions where I'll ask you a question and you just have to give me a one word answer. So it's it's just a one word answer. So first one is who is your favorite soccer team? Madrid. Madrid. Gotcha. <laughs> have you ever seen them play live never gotcha i think they're coming how, how far are you from chicago i'm only like three hours from chicago they they have came out the last couple of times that they came to chicago to play i was working gotcha <laughs> <laughs> gotcha <laughs> yeah dude i watched uh it was so funny how it worked out. But when I went to Lisbon, when I told you earlier, um, I had no idea that uh, there was any games going on at that time. And mm-hmm. I was reading the newspaper and it said that Portugal was playing Sweden in a oh, World nice. Cup qualifying game. And it was in Lisbon. <laughs> like, oh, really? The That's same you, Ronaldo and Zlatan? Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was crazy, man. Ronaldo was 
like he's he's always been my favorite player but like just watching him live like I, I just could not believe how much better he is than everybody else like it's unbelievable so yeah if you ever have a chance um i know he's not on madrid anymore but um if you ever chance to watch him it's crazy dude um yeah for sure one of my favorite players all time yeah all right cool here's the second question what do you think you'd be doing if you weren't a soccer trainer like if you weren't running your business what what would be the occupation you think you would be doing instead I'll be running some more kind of business for sure. <laughs> right, right. That was always my thing. I've always like thought about having my own thing. Right. Very right, cool. And then last one here is, what does the word success mean to you? A one lot word. of failing. A lot of failing. <laughs> <Yeah>. Failings. <laughs> right. It's funny hearing people's response to that, but that's that is the same response I would give is i mean because you're not going to be able to succeed unless you fail a lot True. Uh, like i have yet to meet any successful person who who has never failed like it's virtually impossible uh, and i know that's if we had to really recap our talk that was the thing you talked about a lot is like just overcoming that getting used to it mm. and doing it more because the more you do it the more you're going to learn um True. All right, cool, man. So what I'm going to do also is I'm going to post your website um, and stuff like that under this interview so the other coaches can go check out what you're doing. But is there anything else you want to add um, before we go here? Not really, Coach. I am honestly just wanted to thank you for um, for getting me help me getting started back then and yeah, man, keep doing your thing. You're awesome, and I know you have a lot more people to help. Just like, just like I was, I, I even know people around my town, and you know, some of them I, I talk to, some of them I direct them to you. I, I, but then again, like you said, not all of them go for it. Right. You know. But thank you, man. I, I really appreciate it. You, what, what do you do? That was the biggest resource I found on online, and it's what helped me, helped me back then to actually uh, get it started. Right. The right way i guess yeah that's awesome man no i i appreciate you and and again man I, i'm i'm really proud of of you and what you've been able to accomplish uh a, a lot of a lot of coaches want to be where you're at um but you know they, they got to get started just like you said and, and again it's really cool that you're able to come on here and and share your story and i know it's going to be really valuable for for the listeners, um, uh, to hear everything that you said. So, um, what I want to do, man, I know like right now we're in, uh, March, today's March 1st, March but 15. I would love to have you on here, um, in exactly one year from now. Yeah. So, so at that point, yeah, 2020, it's weird to say yeah. that 2020, um, yeah. <laughs> But uh, it'd be really cool to to have you on then, so we can talk about you know where you're at then between you know today and at that point because uh, I would love to do that and that's going to be the thing I do with all the coaches that I bring on here is I want them just to come on here share their story and then a year from now I'll have them on again so we can talk about how you've grown uh, what you're doing um, over that year. But uh, yeah, man, thanks again for for coming on here. Uh, I really appreciate your time. And again, I know it's going to help out. Thank you for having me though. Yeah. You, you got have it. to send me, uh, can I save this interview too? I'm, 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 I'm I want to share it on.